Welcome to East Meets West. It's a melting pot of cultures and steeped in history. First port of call, I'm going to the Gallipoli Peninsula to check out World War I and the Anzacs and the Brave Turks. The peninsula is where one of the most bloodiest battles were fought in the First World War, involving the Anzacs and the Allied forces against the Turks. Fighting went on for just over a year. The Allied forces lost over 40,000 men and the Turkish 65,000. And in total, there were 500,000 casualties. Walking through the graves of the brave soldiers who had laid their lives down makes me really think how lucky we are today. Conditions in the trenches were appalling. There was body life, there was a stench of dead. It was almost unbearable. And they had to do this for a whole year. Gallipoli is not only about battlefields, but it's also where some of the best wine regions are in Turkey. Not far from Istanbul, it's definitely a worth the trip, and some of the wineries have a great dining options. Suvla is a family-owned wine producer and a viticulture company that is located very close to the Dardanelles. There's quite a few variations of wines, from Merlots to Cab Sauvignons to Chardonnays, also some organic wines, and also some traditional wines that are from Turkey itself. Turkey has a huge influence of ancient Greek architecture. The Temple of Athena is just one of them that you should visit in the Athos region. The name Acropolis comes from the Greek agro, which means the highest, and polis, which means city. In a time with no GPS systems, no radar, and no binoculars, they were built on the highest point, on top of the hill for safety and defense reasons. While looking out on the endless Algerian Sea, Lesbos and Mount Edda views of the Acropolis and of Assos. One should recall that the temple is built not only for worship, it's also a status symbol and reflects society of the culture it used to belong to. So I'm on my way down to Alakati to see this beautiful coastal town. But while we've passed, we've stopped by Begaram, which is an old Greek mythology and also civilization here that's been preserved for a very long time. So let's check out what it has to offer, shall we? The Greeks really knew how to build. Just look at this amazing amphitheater. The city survived a Persian domination and the conquest of Alexander the Great. And every year, almost a million tourists visit Bergama and its ruins. The Greeks really know how to look after their civilizations. I mean, even today, to see what they've still left over, it's amazing. And I've still got to climb this massive hill. I've got to walk all the way up to, my God, all of here. That's how far I've got to walk, absolutely miles. So I better get on with it and enough of the chit chat and start treading on those steps. Can you just imagine? thousands of people sitting here watching this amazing arena going on and a play or a theater so sophisticated for these days or for those days shall I say and still to this day even at my daughter's school they build an amphitheater for the school plays and the tradition still lives on history is amazing If you're not big into Greek temples and architecture, and you have to choose one that you must go to, you must go to the Euphus. When you're traveling down to Aslamer, you must make an effort to see it. It's one of the most ancient cities dating way back to the Roman Empire. The best time to visit is in the early morning or late afternoon, as it's incredibly hot. This draws my time traveling down from the Gallipoli Peninsula to Aslamer. You can then join me on my next adventure, which will be in Alicati.